Hi, budding bookworms. It is our last program of the summer, so I thought we could just have fun talking about summer fun and camping. Because some of you won't be able to go camping this summer, we're just going to look at some other things we can do. So today, we're going to get ready to go out and play in the sun. So I have my sun. I have my sun hat to protect you. I have sunscreen to put all over your skin, wherever the sun will get you, protect your skin. I have bug spray, so spray it on so those mosquitoes won't bite you. And I have my sunglasses to protect your eyes from the sun. So will you sing with me? And we're gonna do Mr. Sun. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, hiding behind the tree. These little children are asking you, please come out so we can play with you. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Good job. So we can have some fun out in the sun today. And we're going to do some songs and stories about being outside. The first one is about a playhouse. Now you might not have a playhouse out in your yard, but maybe you could just make one. And this is a book by Robert Munch where the little girl wants a playhouse. So let's see what happens. Playhouse by Robert Munch, read by Robert Munch. One day, Renee went to her father and said, Please make me a playhouse. Our farm is way out in the middle of the woods, and I have nobody to play with except my little brothers. I need a playhouse. Good idea, said Renee's father, and he made her a wonderful playhouse. It had real windows and a slide and a ladder, and an upstairs and a downstairs. It was almost like a real house, but not quite. The next day, Renee moved lots of stuff from her room into the new playhouse, and it was even more like a real house. Then she drew fish all over the walls of the playhouse, just like the ones on the wall of her real bedroom. Renee was happy for a whole week. Then she went to her mother and said, Is this a city playhouse or a farm playhouse? Well, Renee said to her mother, we live on a farm, so this must be a farm playhouse. Good, said Renee. If it's a farm playhouse, it needs a play barn. A play what, said her mother? A play barn, said Renee. I never heard of a play barn, said Renee's mother. But she was such a nice mother that she built Renee a play barn. It took her two weeks. Renee moved some hay and some chickens from the real barn into her play barn, and it was almost like a real barn, but not quite. Then Renee went to her father and said, I need a play cow. A play what, said her father. A play cow, said Renee. A farm playhouse needs a play barn, needs a play cow. I can't build a play cow, said Renee's father, and the play barn is not big enough for a real cow. No problem, said Renee. How about you give me a goat and paint it so it looks like a cow, and then I will have a play cow. So Renee's father got her a goat and painted it so it looked like a cow. Renee put her play cow, which was really a goat, in the play barn, and she felt like she had a farm of her own, but not quite. Then Renee went to her father and said, My play farm is out in the middle of the woods, just like our real farm. So it needs the tractor and the bulldozer and the tree snipper and the log chopper. Why don't you just park them by my playhouse? Then you will not have to make me anything new. So her father parked the tractor and the bulldozer and the tree snipper and the log chopper beside the playhouse, and Renee played quite nicely for a whole month. Then Renee went to her mother and said, A farm playhouse needs a play barn, needs a play cow, needs a play tractor, needs a play 
play mummy and a play daddy. A play who and a play what, said her mother. A play mummy and a play daddy, said Renee. No, said Renee's mother. You already have a real mummy and a real daddy. You don't need a play mummy and a play daddy. The real ones are too bossy, said Renee. Ha, said her mother. I am not going to make you a play mummy and a play daddy. So Renee cut out a cardboard play mummy and a cardboard play daddy and stuck them on the side of her playhouse. And while she was at it, she made two play brothers. When Renee came in for dinner, there was a scarecrow sitting in her chair. What's that, said Renee. That, said her mother, is my play Renee. She is always nice and never bossy. You can eat play food out in the playhouse with your play mummy and your play daddy. Renee said, play Renee and I are going to go outside. Then the real Renee took the play Renee and fed it to the play cow, which was Ruby. The goat ate all the clothes and all the straw, and soon play Renee was completely gone. Then Renee walked into the kitchen and gave her mother a kiss. Was that a real kiss or a play kiss, said Renee's mother. That, said Renee, was a real kiss from a real bossy daughter for a real bossy mummy. Now can I have my real dinner with my real family? No problem, said her mother. I like real bossy kids better than play kids anyway. And everyone had a real wonderful dinner. The end. That was a fun story. So something else we can do outside in the summer is, do you have one of these? It's called a butterfly net. So you can go out and you can follow a butterfly and you can hopefully catch one. Look what I caught in my other one. A butterfly! You know it's not real, but you can catch a real one. But just remember, when you catch a butterfly, don't touch his wings because you get the powder off his wings and then he wouldn't be able to fly away. Beautiful. So that's another fun thing to do. Or you can take a walk to the pond. Now at our pond in Strathmore, we have these. Ducks, you're right. So help me count my ducks. One, two, three, four, and five. So if you use your fingers, put a five, and you can sing the song with me. Five little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, quack, quack. But only four little ducks came back. Four little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, quack, quack. But only three little ducks came back. Three. Three little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 but only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 but only one little duck came back. One little duck went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 but no little ducks came wandering back. Mother duck went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck say, said quack, 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 and five little ducks came wandering back. One, two, Three, four, and five. Good counting. So another thing you can do this summer is have a picnic. Now I have my teddy with me, and he's going to go on a picnic with me. So we're going to read the story called Teddy Bear's Picnic. And it is a song, too, so you can sing along with me, too. 
If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you'd better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was, we'll gather there for certain because today is the day the teddy bears have their picnic. Got their lunch all packed ready for their picnic. And the calendar says, picnic day. Every teddy bear who's been good is sure of a treat today. There's lots of marvelous things to eat and wonderful games to play. Beneath the trees where nobody sees, they'll hide and seek as long as they please. Because that's the way the teddy bears have their picnic. I see food, balloons, lots of games. If you go down in the woods today, you better not go alone. It's lovely down in the woods today, but safer to stay at home. For every bear that ever there was, we'll gather there for certain, because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. Picnic time for teddy bears. The little teddy bears are having a lovely time today. Watch them catch them unawares, and see them picnic on their holiday. See them gladly, glad about, glad about. Here they are playing their games. Hide and seek. Look at this one's hiding up a tree. Then they're playing a game with balls. They love to play and shout. They never have any care. At six o'clock, their mommies and daddies will take them home to bed. It's getting dark in the woods. Oh, because they're tired little teddy bears. Good night, bear. So I'm going to take my bear and we're going to go and get ready for a picnic too. So come on with me. So I have my teddy and he's going to be in the chair. He's all ready for a picnic. So we're going to make a snack to have in our picnic. So first of all we need Maybe a tablecloth to put on your picnic table. And then I'm going to make a sandwich because I love taking sandwiches on a picnic. Do you? Me too. So I have my bread. What's your favorite sandwich? Peanut butter. That's always a favorite. So you scoop in there, spread it over your sandwich. And do you like jam? You could add some jam. I'm going to cut it in half, and there's my peanut butter sandwich. So what would be good to eat with a peanut butter sandwich? I think maybe some fruit, an apple or banana. Never go wrong with cookies, right? So we put some cookies with our picnic, and we need something to drink. So you can do maybe a juice box, or what's really good for you, especially when you're out in the sun, is your water. All right, so now we're ready to leave for our picnic. So we're gonna put it in our picnic bag. 
One glass of water. Juice. Banana with fruit. Cookies. And your sandwich. And now you're ready to go. Let's go have a teddy bear picnic. Maybe down in the woods. All right. So now we're going to pretend that we're going camping. Some of us can't go camping this year, but we can pretend. So I'm going to pretend today. So this really is a candle, but I'm going to pretend it's my campfire. And do you know what you like to make over a campfire? S'mores, you're right. So you get a stick. You could just pick a branch off the ground, and that's where you're going to stick on your marshmallows. Now, I only had mini marshmallows, but you can use big ones if you like. So I put them on here, and then we're going to roast them over the fire. So we keep churning them so they don't burn on one side. Mmm, smells good. Okay, now they're nice and brown. So we're gonna take your marshmallows and we're going to put them on a graham cracker. So we do it like this. They're all melted, so they're very hot. So you have to be careful. And then we add something delicious. Have a little chocolate bar. And you put it on there and it's gonna melt and be nice and gooey with your marshmallows. And then we put on the top of your sandwich and you squish it together and you have a s'more. Oh, they're delicious. Mm. This is making me hungry. I bet it is you too. So on our picnic, these little fellas came along. Can you see who they are? Huh? The ants. The Jones family was out enjoying the day. But look, they have left and they've gone off to play. So one little ant makes a little cup from a leaf. Here he is. And takes a drink of something quite sweet. Mm, maybe that was the juice. Then the little ant says, Come out, Stan. Let's enjoy this spread while we can. Stan comes out and carries an apple slice. So now two little ants are having a feast so nice. Then Stan says, the coast is finally clear now, Reese. So Reese comes and snacks on some cheese. So now three little ants are cleaning their plates, saying to each other, this picnic is great. Then Reese says, hey, Bob, there's plenty more. So another ant comes out, and now there are four. Bob nibbles on a cookie that's really delish. He says, wow, this is better than I ever could wish. When Jack comes out for some more bread, he makes five but the family's coming back. So under the blankets, they dive. The family looks around and says, for goodness sake, somebody cleaned up and left the most beautiful cake. See the ants? Maybe the ants will join you when you're having your picnic. So come on back. I have another story for you. So when we go camping, sometimes we camp by a lake. Do you? It's more fun with water. So you have to take your pail with you and we're going to build a sand castle. And that's what this story is called. Sand Castle Contest by my favorite author, Robert Munch. Wow, that's a lot of sand. Matthew's father stood in the driveway and said, I think we're all ready to go. Make sure everything's here. 
Do we have the bicycles? Yes. Do we have the food? Yes. Do we have the boat? Yes. Do we have everything? No, yelled Matthew. No, said his dad. No, said Matthew. We don't have a dog. Dog, said his dad. We don't even have a dog. I know, said Matthew. Now would be a really good time to have a dog. No dog, said his dad. Now we have everything. No, yelled Matthew. We don't have my sandbox. Matthew said his mom, we can't bring the sandbox. But the first place we camp will have a nice beach and you will have lots of sand to play with. Well, said Matthew, okay. So they drove and drove and drove and drove and drove until they came to a place to camp. Matthew jumped out of the van and ran to the beach. He came to a girl making a small sand castle and a big sand dog. She said, hi, my name is Kalita and I'm going to win the sand castle contest. Wow, said Matthew. I'm going to build a sand castle too. What can I win? You can win a bathtub full of ice cream, said Kalita. All right, said Matthew. So Matthew made a house with doors and windows and a roof. He dug out the inside of the house so it had rooms, just like a real house. He made tables and sand chairs and bed and a sand TV that had a sand show on it. When Matthew was almost done, Kalita came to look at his house. She had her sand dog on a leash. Nice sand house, said Kalita. Really, really nice sand dog, said Matthew. A judge came by and said, get this house out of here. Who put this house on the beach? This is my sand house, said Matthew. I made it for the sand contest. Ha, said the judge. I know a real house when I see one and there are no real houses allowed on the beach. Then he went inside and sat down on the sand chair and watched a sand show on TV. Another judge came by and said, get this house out of here. Who put this house on the beach? This is my sand house, said Matthew, and I made it for the sand contest. contest. Ha, said the judge. I know a real house when I see one, and there are no real houses allowed on the beach. She went into the bedroom and looked at the sand bed. She went into the kitchen, opened the refrigerator, and looked at the sand apples and the sand celery and the sand cartons of milk. Then she said, little boy, you've got to get this house off the beach. This is my sand house, said Matthew, and I'm going to prove it. Ha, said the judges. So Matthew went outside and kicked the sand house right beside the door. It all turned back into an enormous pile of sand and fell on the judges. Help, yelled the judges. Everybody came running and dug them out. When the judges were finally out from under the sand, they yelled, Matthew wins! His ha sand house was so good that we thought it was a real house. Matthew wins! Everybody yelled. And they gave him a bathtub full of ice cream. 
Matthew started eating the ice cream and he said to Kalita, want to help me eat this? Yes, said Kalita. While they were eating the ice cream, Matthew said, how come you didn't tell everybody that your dog is sand? I bet you would have won with a sand dog. Well, said Kalita, this is Sandy, my sand dog, and I'm going to take him camping and feed him ice cream every day, and he's going to be my pet, and I'm never going to turn him back into sand. Wow, said Matthew. I wish I had thought of that. Can you show me how to make one? No problem, said Kalita. And Matthew's mom and dad were so happy with Matthew's amazing sand dog that they decided to take it camping. Fun camping song. Now sometimes when I'm out camping, or sometimes if you live by a pond, you can hear these guys. They are, yes, frogs. So let's count how many I have. Two, three, four, and five. So once again, use your fingers, get a five, and we're gonna sing this song. There was five little speckled frogs sitting on speckled logs eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are four speckled frogs. There was four little speckled frogs sitting on speckled logs eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are three speckled frogs. There was three little speckled frogs sitting on speckled logs eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are two speckled frogs. There was two little speckled frogs sitting on speckled logs eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there is one speckled frog. There was one little speckled frog sitting on speckled logs eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are no speckled frogs. Grub, grub. So another fun thing we can do this summer is chalk. Out on your sidewalk, out on the pathways, you can go and draw something. You could draw hopscotch or flowers or just even write a nice message for somebody walking by that will make them smile. That would be a fun thing to do. Or one more thing I've got that we can do. Bubbles. I love bubbles, don't you? I can do them inside the house because it's my house, but you should do it outside. That makes it fun. Okay, we have time for one more story. Back here with my, my summer flowers. I have a book that has summer flowers in it too, and some animals. And this little boy's going on a safari, which is another fun thing to do in the summer. You can get your binoculars, and you can go out and you can see what you can see. This book is called, Dear Daisy, Get Well Soon. So you can see a ladder coming out his window. 
and a ladder going up to Daisy's window. On Sunday, my friend Daisy came down with the chicken pox and she couldn't come out to play. Can you see the spots on her face? On Monday, I made a card that said, get well soon. There he is, he's got his crayons. There's his animals on the bed, his binoculars. But who's looking in the window? And I sent it over. Here's the note. To Daisy. On Tuesday, I picked two bunches of flowers. And I sent them over. Daisy's still sick in bed. On Wednesday, I got down three coloring books. Who's peeking in the window? And I sent them over. They had to carry them on their nose. On Thursday, I picked four shiny apples. Who's hiding in the tree? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. And I sent them over. Oh, look at Daisy's at the window now. Maybe she's starting to feel better. On Friday, I blew up five rainbow balloons. Two, three, four. Oh, and peeking down the top, five. And I sent them over. On Saturday, I got a note that said, please come over from Daisy. So I went on over to Daisy's. Oh, a nice hug. And we played all day. Till night time. The birds have gone to sleep. The squirrel's gone to sleep. Good night. That's the end of our story time today, but we will look forward to seeing you at Mother Goose. It's going to be at the park beside the library, and we're going to start the end of July. So look on our website, find out all the details, and I hope to see you there. Bye, everybody. Have a good day and a good week and a good summer. See you later.